If you're looking to put together a two-channel stereo setup in 2022, consider buying an AV receiver. Yeah, I said it. And here's five reasons why an AV receiver might be right for you and your hi-fi needs in the new year. Before we jump into the video, I would like to thank today's sponsor, Keeps. Did you know that two out of three men will experience some type of hair loss by the time they're 35? You know how I know that? Because I started to suffer from thinning hair in my mid-20s, and by my mid-30s, it had become a real problem, something many of you noticed in my videos and told me about in the comments. Yeah, my ego was a little bit bruised, but I went online and thankfully discovered Keeps. With Keeps, I was able to get expert care for my thinning hair without having to go to the doctor or visit a pharmacy. As a result, I now get all of my doctor-recommended hair care treatments delivered straight to my door. Because with Keeps, I found a plan that worked for me in my goal to reverse my thinning hair and even stimulate new hair growth, which I have to say, after more than a year of use, is working great. And yes, some of you have even noticed, but like all things health-related, especially as we age, we have to stay on top of it, which is why Keeps subscription-based service means that I always have what I need in-house to keep my hair looking its best. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash Andrew Robinson or just click the link in the description. That's keeps.com slash Andrew Robinson. Thank you again to Keeps for sponsoring this video. And now back to it. If you ask an audiophile or hi-fi purist, what's the best way to build a high-performance stereo setup, they'll no doubt tell you to piece one together, as in piece by piece. And while they're not necessarily wrong, it is an antiquated way of going about enjoying two-channel audio in the modern era. Nothing, nothing against hi-fi separates, but nowadays you can do so much more with less, as in less boxes and often way less money. And one of the best ways to enjoy two-channel audio at a surprisingly high yet more affordable level is to shop for an AV receiver or surround sound receiver over a stereo integrated amplifier. Now, before we get into using an AVR, let's first go over what a traditional two-channel stereo setup looks like. Back in the day, if you wanted to enjoy higher-end audio playback, you needed two speakers, an amplifier, a preamp, a source component in the form of, say, a record player or CD player, and a whole mess of cables to connect everything together. This is how it was done back in the day, and this is still how it's largely done today. Sure, stereo receivers and integrated amplifiers have merged separate amplifiers and preamps into a single chassis, and some even have sources like streaming music players built in, but those types of pieces are still somewhat the exception rather than the norm in hi-fi, though times they are a change in. But for the most part, if you want to build a traditional hi-fi setup, even in 2022, you're going to need to buy multiple components and find a place to put all of them, not to mention set them up along with your speakers in such a way as to maximize their performance because they're not likely to have any setup aids to help streamline the process. Which is precisely why I would encourage some of you watching this to take a different, more radical approach and go with an AV receiver for your two-channel needs. Now, the first way an AV or home theater surround sound receiver is better than their two-channel counterparts is simple. They're largely all-inclusive. With an AV receiver, you get an amplifier, and not just an amplifier for two speakers, but amplification for multiple speakers. So if you want to expand into home theater or surround sound down the road, you can. With all of those extra channels of amplification, you get greater flexibility with respect to bi-amping, meaning more precious power for your speakers. You also get a built-in preamp with tons of flexibility, not to mention built-in streaming music capability as well as smart home integration. A lot of AV receivers nowadays even have decent phono preamps, so you, you can connect a record player to them. Now, I don't know about you, but most of us don't have the option to have a dedicated listening room that is separate from our primary living space. I suspect a lot of you have two-channel setups in rooms that also host your TV, not to mention other family members. With an AV receiver as the centerpiece of your two-channel rig, you can connect it to your TV in ways that give you the flexibility to enjoy both music and movies through the same system, albeit in stereo. So no more watching movies through crappy TV speakers. And to those of you who may be allergic to the word soundbar, 
You're welcome. Here's your solution. The other benefit to this type of setup is that most modern TVs nowadays have a lot of apps for both streaming movies and music built in. So if your AV receiver does not support, say, Apple Music, there's a good chance your TV will, so you will never be without your favorite music services. Now, one of the biggest upgrades you can do to any loudspeaker setup, be it two-channel or home theater, is to integrate a subwoofer. And while it is becoming more and more common for hi-fi components like integrated amps and stereo preamps to have a subwoofer output, even the best, most forward-thinking hi-fi components can't hold a candle to an AV receiver when it comes to subwoofer integration. Plus, Many AVRs nowadays allow you to connect multiple subwoofers. Now, multiple subwoofers does not mean double the bass, which is a common misconception. Can you get away with a single subwoofer? Yes, of course you can. I, I do it all the time. But if given the option, is more than one sub typically better? You bet. Now, in my humble opinion, room correction software from the likes of Dirac, Odyssey, Wipow, and others, it's hands down the biggest reason why an AV receiver makes way more sense for two-channel listening than traditional two-channel components. Much like dedicated listening spaces, not everyone has the luxury of setting up their room in such a way so that their loudspeakers or system is able to sound its best without any additional assistance in the form of acoustic panels or other such treatments. It's also equally possible that many just don't want to live inside a padded cell. You'll be in a padded cell forever. Maybe we could share one. This is where room correction software comes in. While software like Dirac isn't a magic bullet in that it can't completely defy the laws of physics and allow you to have reference caliber sound in a space with truly poor speaker placement and audible reflections, I'm going to argue that software such as this will have a more profound effect on your system's overall clarity and sound quality in most typical living spaces than hanging an acoustic panel or 12. Nothing against acoustic panels, they're great and they do work, but they're often very narrow with respect to their bandwidth or effectiveness, meaning you need a fair amount of them and multiple different types to correct for every potential sonic anomaly that may plague your setup. Software like Dirac and Odyssey are mostly full range solutions and can tackle sonic baddies like peaks, dips, reverb, decay times using processing and filters in ways old school bass traps and whatnot simply can't. And yes, Dirac and Odyssey work in stereo just as well as they do in multi-channel. Now, I alluded to this one earlier, but one of the greatest strengths about going with an AVR over an integrated amplifier has to do with flexibility. While you may consider yourself a two-channel purist today, that isn't to say you're going to be one tomorrow, or that you wouldn't benefit from, say, adding a center channel to your rig for better center imaging or vocal clarity down the road. In this respect, receivers make loads of sense, to me anyway, because as time and technologies change, so too does one's taste. And I just feel that AV receivers are more or less aimed at giving you absolutely everything you may need today, as well as features you may not know you need until you decide you want them later. So that's it. Those are my five reasons for why I think AV receivers should be on your short list of components to consider if you're looking to put together a high performance two channel system in 2022. But I suspect Christy has something to say about it. I mean, honestly, I really don't have a dog in this fight. Okay. I, I'm, I'm all about whatever works best for you mm -hmm. and your budget and your space and your, you know, personal tastes. Mm -hmm. So my question would be more maybe of what what might be the counter argument to this video. So I have a feeling there may be some people that think this is really cool and like a great idea that maybe they haven't considered. But yeah. are there any instances where you don't think going with an AV receiver is best and you mm. maybe they should just stick to more the more traditional path, whether that might be an integrated or Separates. separates. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I think that if you have very difficult to drive loudspeakers, I'm talking about old school electrostatics, magnet pans, but even some big box speakers like ELAC, which are, which have been known to dip below, say, four ohms, then 
yeah, you may not be best suited with a receiver because a lot of receivers kind of fall into a power rating of about 50 to maybe 150 watts unless you go way up market in terms of your receivers and you look at something like a Rotel. But for the most part, I'm talking about receivers that you're going to be able to pick up at, say, a Best Buy or something like that. Um, in those instances, an AVR likely isn't going to be perfect for you. If you do have a dedicated listening space or you've put a substantial financial investment together into channel listening, I doubt you're going to look at an AVR. But for me, I think if your budget for a two channel rig falls somewhere below, say, 3,500 bucks, maybe even five grand all in, I totally think an AVR should be on your short list of things to consider. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to go out and get an AVR or that it is the best solution for everybody, but I am routinely shocked. A, how many of you ask, can you use an AVR for music listening, number one? And the answer to that question is unequivocally, yes, you can. But how many people overlook AVRs when putting together a two-channel system because they think they're just about home theater? Um, but yes, there are some instances, you know, if you're trying to go super high end esoteric or you have very difficult to drive loudspeakers, you know, AVR is probably not going to be the best choice, but I mean, heck I've, I've put some really high end stuff on home theater receivers in the past and I can't say that I've been disappointed. So to each their own, but for all of the reasons outlined in this video, those are the five, six main reasons why I think that AVRs are worth a look. They really, really are. I agree. I mean, I think that most, like you said, a lot of the, a lot of the speakers that we get sent to review, mm -hmm. because we're typically going from maybe a two channel setup to more of a home theater traditional setup. Yeah. A lot of times there's crossover mm -hmm. in what it, what, what it is that we're reviewing. So you guys, maybe you don't realize this, but Andrew does put AVRs on a lot of the equipment that comes through mm -hmm. just because it's <laughs> maybe even as much as like just an ease of use. It's, it's just out. So go ahead and connect it. Yeah. And, like he said, a lot of times it works just as well mm -hmm. as something that's more catered to a two channel setup. Um, the only thing that I could, the only speakers I can really think of that we've, we've reviewed that wouldn't work mm. with a receiver would be the PSB T600, the synchrony speakers. Yeah. Yeah. And then the Bowers and Wilkins 702 signatures. Yeah. No. We reviewed like a year or so ago. Mm hmm those needed like the power of the sun <laughs> to get going. <laughs> yeah, so I wouldn't did. put an AVR on speakers of that nature. But for the most part, I think they can work really well. Yeah. The only time that I may consider an AVR for something like a Bowers and Wilkins 702, which is very hungry, power hungry, is if your AVR has preamp outputs and you're able to connect a third party, more powerful amplifier to it, but that starts to get into the territory of how AVRs save you in space and money because now you're kind of putting together a separate system around a receiver. So, but it is doable. It is doable. So anything else? No, I don't think so. We'll have a few, uh, ideas for you in the description in case you have questions about which, which ones? ones. Yeah. We'll put our favorites for both movies and music down in the description. So, you know, and uh, my recommendation for buying AV receivers nowadays, um, especially with the supply chain shortages, is if there's one that you know you want and like and it's in stock, you should probably get it today because who knows if it's going to be there tomorrow or weeks later. So just keep that in mind. So that's it for us today. That is today's video. Let us know what you think down in the comments. And while you're down there, I've got a question of the day for you. And it is this, how else do you think AVRs make more sense compared to traditional hi-fi components? And if I may throw a little bit of an audible in there, if you are against AVRs in a hi-fi setup, tell me why. 
I think this is going to be a really fun conversation, but please keep it respectful. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you have continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And both of us, thank you very much for doing that. Speaking of thanks, thank you again to Keeps for sponsoring this episode. To save 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com forward slash Andrew Robinson and oh, follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile. And that is it for us today. Sorry again for the sound. We're still moving in. This is going to be a work in progress, but you guys already knew that. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to see you on the next video. Bye.